Hey guys, I hope you're doing good. In this video we're gonna do the review of Zonestar Dual Color 3D Printer, so stay tuned. First thing is unboxing. Printer was well packed and protected with a foam on every side and it was no damage to any of the parts inside. I especially like how the rods were protected with a carpet cylinder shape box. For the change of the rest of Pro i3 clones this printer has a full metal frame made from a stainless steel metal sheets which is much stronger and better than the acrylic frame. This 3D printer kit came with a 6 stepper motor for dual extruder which means that you can print object in two colors. All parts were clearly macked in a separate bags with label number for easy access. Whole frame section are made from 1.3mm stainless steel sheets. Heated bed is MK3 140W with the pre-soldered wires. Even so, at this printer came with a dual extruder, only one filament holder is included in the box. With this kit you also get one blue tape sheet and a 3D printer tape. Power supply is a standard 12 volt, 20 amps for a total power of 240 watt. On the front metal plate there is a Zone Star logo. Heated bed carriage is also made for 1.3 mm steel sheet. X carriage has HED3 dual hot end with a 2 heat block with two 0.4 mm nozzle. There is a two fans and two standard linear bearings. Motherboard is Zone Star version 3.2. LCD is a standard 2004 model with 4 buttons. There is a sensor for auto level, anti wobble fix module with bearings for Z rods. All the screws are in the plastic box and there is also supply and necessary tools. Release of documents and installation guides are on this microSD card with a reader. On the microSD card there is 11 folders which contain the product picture, part list, installation guide, operation guide, checkout, level guide, test 3D models, auto level guide, PC software and drivers, troubleshooting and the firmware. So quite plenty information to get you started. Building this 3D printer was a very enjoyable experience. Following an instruction manual it went without a glitch and with the help of my Russian blue friends I was able to assemble this kit in a couple hours. Only wiring takes some extra time but that's how it is with most do-it-yourself 3D printer kit. And it's done. This is how the Zone Star 3D printer look when it's fully assembled. Now closer view and some specs. This printer has dual EM4 Bolden style extruder with the HED3 hotend with the two heat block and the two nozzles with the auto level sensor, which means it can print in two colors. Nozzle temperature can reach maximum 275 degree, heated bed can reach 210 degrees, so the printing ABS shouldn't be a problem. Maximum build size is 220 by 220 by 240 mm and the maximum layer thickness is 0.1. Slice software can be Cura or Simplified 3D and there is a configuration files on SD card for them as well. And now it's time for the first start. Quick scroll through the menu in the software and you will find that on this 3D printer there is a more options than usual. I'm going to scroll fast to the software to show you guys what you can change. There is a lot of parameters for speed, position, bed coating for Z offset, auto level, acceleration, feed rate, step adjusting, extruder select and so on. There is a couple languages to choose and all the changes that you make you can save directly into the firmware. So next time when you start the printer all the settings will be active. Of course I don't recommend changing any of those settings if you don't know what you're doing it's best to keep them default. Now for my first test print is 3D Benji, printed with the first nozzle on the left at 40mm a second. Result turned out to be very good but not the best. The test print has shown some lags in a cooling fan from the duck nozzle. So I decided to print 3D Benji again with the same settings but this time with a second nozzle on the right. Results was much better and the print turned out pretty good and that's mainly because of the position of the duct air nozzle which blows more air on the right nozzle than on the left. 3D Benji also shows some symptoms of salmon skin which is usually affect mostly Delta style 3D printers and not Cartesian. 
This layer noise can be solved using TL smoothers on every step model, but that's subject for some other video. My next print is the vase printed with the first nozzle and the quality was pretty good. Even that airflow from the cooling fan was low, that did not affect on the vase so much, because there is a plenty of time for material to cool down before the next layer. Alright, let's print on the right nozzle now. Printing same ways with the right nozzle shows similar results. The axis is pretty stable and there is no separation between the layers. Beside that salmon skin artifact, this vase looks very good. Now for the testing of full height, I print out the 6 angle vase. The finishing part are looking very good. The Z axis are stable, there is no wobbling, vase edges and angles are straight and they're looking sharp. The salmon skin artifact here are not that noticeable. And now it's time for the dual color testing. My first dual color test print is a Marvin keychain. I gotta say it was very really interesting looking these uh, nozzles switching places between the color change. I print this Marvin keychain without any support and without any O shield. And the results was very okay. And I got decent two color print. Areas on the bottom did not turn so good because of the cooling nozzle and the lack of the support material. I decide to print out Marvin keychain again, but this time I switch colors position and I add O's shield. For printing in dual color you have to merge two objects into one and then choose in Acura which extruder will print which part and how. Something similar you have a two printers in one. This can be handy not only for dual color prints, but if you're printing two different models in the same time. One model you can print with one color and other model you can print in other color. You can also mix different types of material on the same printing object or you can use first extruder to print cheaper filament for example for the support material only and then choose second extruder with expensive filaments to print only the main part. That's quite handy. I printed this Moe using old shield options in Acura which is practically a shield just one layer thick and protects prints from uh, filament leakage when one nozzle switches to the next one and before every layer active nozzle gets clean before every print. When using the ooze shield you can achieve much better quality when you're printing something in two colors. Now this print turned out to be much better than the previous one and actually looks pretty good. I just here use the standard settings and no special tweaks beside the ooze shield. Overall the print looks pretty cool. And for the final print with the more details on I decided to print this owl using the silver PLA and the right nozzle. Print quality on this owl was decent even with this cooling nozzle, but salmon skin here was more noticeable on this print especially around the eyes and on the back of the print. Line in the middle of the part we can ignore because it was my fault. Filament was tangled on the spool and I had to pause the print, fix it and continue to print again. Now for the final test is the bed warming up time. Heated bed hits 60 degrees under 2 minutes and it reached 115 degrees under 7 minutes without any insulation under the plate, which is very good result. Using insulation material under the heat bed this time can be even more improved and you will get even the faster warming up time. Now before my final words I would like to share some things that I didn't like about this printer, starting with the nozzle level. My left nozzle was around 0.1 mm higher from the print surface, so I had to screw down the right nozzle just a tiny bit to make them match. Next, wiring is a bit messy and I recommend printing some kind of cover for the motherboard. Next, the power supply is the open type and the switch is on the way on the main AC cable, so I definitely recommend here printing some kind of PC cover, there is a plenty options on the Thingverse. And the last but most important is these AC terminals on the back of the switch. Now I know there is insulation of these terminals, but they are very close to the metal frame, not a smart move, so here I definitely recommend putting some extra insulation just for extra safety. And guys, there you have it, this was my test and the review for the Zonestar Dual Extruder 3D Printer. Right now it's on the sale for 305 US dollars on the Gearbest, making the cheapest 3D printer with metal frame and a dual extruder on the market. With better cooling nozzle and some adjusting on the steppers, this can be a decent machine. Zonestar have also other 5 similar Prusa E3 clone like this one, so make sure you check them as well. Link of this 3D printer and other Zonestar 3D printers will be in the video description, so if you're interesting, check it out. If you have any suggestion about my reviews and my testing, please leave them in the comments below. 
I hope that you enjoy in this video. If so, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Till next time, take care and happy printing. Bye bye.